40 Smith & Wesson versus 357 Magnum, and today what I have is gold dot ammunition. Both of these are about the same sectional density. You know, I have about a 125 grain 357 Magnum at, you know, 357 diameter versus a 40 caliber, 40 diameter at 165. Now, the reason why I'm picking these two, and a lot of people are going to say, well, that's not fair. Why are you even testing those two? The main reason is because back in the heyday of the revolver, around like this, a 125 grain full house Magnum was pretty much the go-to standard for quote-unquote stopping power. And in the heyday of the 40, it had some really good street credibility. It was a really good stopper. So what I want to do is compare the, both of them together side by side and you know kind of see how they compare. Now with this particular 357 Magnum ammunition, I actually only have a few rounds. So I have this Underwood as a stand-in and it is a 125 grain. It is the same bullet. It is the same bullet as the spear bullet here. And if I can kind of show this, it's, it's the same 125 grain gold dot bullet. And it's moving at the same velocity. So that'll give us, you know, the same result that we would get with the actual gold dot. Because it is a gold dot bullet at the same velocity. So we're going to go through our chronograph and see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. And then we're going to go through our clear ballistics, our 10% clear ballistics. So we have four layers of denim. We have three inches of clear ballistics. And then we have a quarter inch medium density fiberboard to kind of represent like ribs or sternum. And then into more clear ballistics. Typically, this adds about two inches more of this. Not always, but typically. So that should give us a good real world resistance like ribs or sternum that you don't normally get in just plain clear ballistics testing or ballistics gel testing. Then I'm gonna shoot from actually 50 yards today at my ISPC full size steel silhouette. I know that a lot of people say that's not practical. Well, it's not meant to be practical. It's just meant to be an exercise to see, you know, what is theoretically possible with rounds like that uh, because you never know. Um, you know, typical self-defense, no, you're not going to be shooting at that distance. However, you have a mass shooter it's shooting at you. Well, you might want to know if your handguns can shoot that far to answer back. So enough with the talk. Let's get started with this test. All right, I'm about five yards from the target, four yards from the chronograph. There is no velocity actually listed on the box of either of these rounds of gold dot. So I'm just going to have to you know, see what I get. First up, we have our 165 grain uh, 40 Smith & Wesson from our 5-inch barrel here. So let's see what we got. 1170. 1141. 1145. 1130. 1146. So that's a pretty powerful round for what it is. Let's see how the 357 compares. All right, 357 mag. Let's see what we get. 1527, 1394, 1481, that ain't right, 1514, so pretty good velocity overall, um, pretty typical for your typical 357 Magnum load, just your standard 125 grain. So let's hit our ballistics gel block with that MDF and see what we get. All right, first up is our 40 Smith & Wesson through the medium density fiber board. Let's see what we get here. 1540. The first thing I'm seeing here is where it impacted the MDF. It's really, you know, starting to expand already in that first three inches of gel. So this thing, Went to, the damage path is exactly 19 inches, so that's 21 inches typically if we we're talking about a gut shot. So let's do that gut shot, and what I mean by that is to take away the medium density fiber board to represent this bullet not hitting something hard, and we'll see what it gives with that. Um, it should be up here, but it might not be, so let's see what we get. All right, let's do our gut shot and see what the 40 does. It 
And it's hard to see this, but what we're looking at here is we're at about, our damage path is about at 23 and a half, 23 and a quarter. Uh, so there's a difference there of about four inches. So what that typically would mean is that the MDF bullet expanded more. Uh, not necessarily, but there is definitely a difference in all bullets when they hit something. That's a little bit of a hard, a hard barrier. So very interesting here. Uh, let's try our 357 Magnum. All right, 357 Mag through our MDF. Let's see what we get. <laughs> I keep I keep having this phenomenon happen a lot here. I don't know why it does this. It pulls down. We definitely have some really good expansion. Nice hot bullet here, but that's yeah, burning my hand there. Um, I want to catch it more in the actual block rather than bring it down. It's It's been happening lately with magnums. So let me shoot it again through the MDF. All right, let's try it again. Yeah, we definitely see a difference here. Um, let's move this up to three inches. And even after going through that MDF, there's just a ton of damage going on right there. And we actually see the bullet here at, you know, there's not a damage path past it, but it's right at 21 even. So it's gonna be like 23 even. And it's definitely expanded. Let's try it without the MDF and see how that does. All right, do our gut shot, see how this does. And yeah, so this is the difference here. And the only thing that can account for that typically is that you probably had more expansion on the one that's not the MDF bullet. I could be wrong, but we actually shaved off a, a part of that right there. And we went up to 20 inches of our damage path. So that's very interesting there. So both of these really had a lot of penetration. I would not necessarily call them over penetrating, but they're pretty much, you know, they're past your, your, your typical like FBI number, but I would not consider that too bad, honestly. So let's shoot from 50 yards and let's just see how these rounds will do. All right, there's our steel silhouette at 50 yards. I just wanted to make a mention, just in case anybody's not aware of this, I legitimately do shoot up the defensive ammo at these tests. I'm not shooting target ammo. Um, I'm taking these expensive boxes of ammo and I'm shooting them. I'm shooting them right up for these tests. Just, you know, so we get data on this stuff. So anyways, 40 Smith & Wesson, gold dot from 50 yards. Let's see if I can hit that steel silhouette. This gun shoots a little left for me. So let's just see if, what happens if I aim right on it. Not able to hit it. So what was going on there is I had to aim about the head area of that target. I didn't realize at first it was hitting really, really, really low. Um, but once I adjusted for that, it's a little left, but I mean, it's mostly drop or at least, you know, how the sights are for impacting. Cause at 50 yards, we, we shouldn't really see drop of 40 Smith and Wesson. So let's try the 357 mag. So 357 mag is interesting, even though the energy is sometimes similar at muzzle you know 357 carries a lot of energy further so let's see what we get with the 357.
Missed a couple there. <laughs> and it is kind of hard to know when you're hitting because it, this is definitely moving along a lot faster. Even though we're over 1,100 feet per second, we're still 400 feet per second faster with the 357 Magnum. So it is moving. Uh, keep trying here. one that round has some thunder there now this round is loaded just a hair warmer than gold dots i tested them in the past and what i was getting with this round this underwood round was like 1450 and that gold dot 1430 or something like that feet per second average um, since the last time i've tested it it looks like underwood has beefed it up just a little bit but nonetheless it's still a typical magnum load and it is still a gold dot bullet so even if we look at possibly gold dots 357 being uh, you know 75 feet per second slower than this it's a gold dot bullet and it's going to perform anything over 1200 feet per second on that standard not not short barrel gold dot is going to perform pretty much the same within reason it's a it's a well-made bullet and you're going to get expansion so any difference between the underwood and the gold dot load it's probably not going to be significant but that's what you get today comparable rounds in some respects and the reason why i say comparable from the beginning was you know, you look at a lot of the data, one shot stop. I know a lot of people don't agree with that, and I don't agree with that either. However, there is some interesting data to look at. And if you look at the data and you compare it with the street credibility, that's when you get the full picture. Because you look at some of the data, and it says nine millimeters up here, 90%, 89%, 91%. Well, you can compare it to the actual street data that you've seen, you know, dash cam footages, body cam footages, it doesn't line up with that. It doesn't line up with the stories you hear people say. However, 357 Magnum and 40, it shows numbers like that, 89, 90, 92, 94, 96%, and that lines up with a lot of the stories and street credibility of it. So I think these two rounds are just excellent rounds overall. So that's what you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching. <laughs>